In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. And brothers and sisters, as we prepare for these holy and sacred mysteries, let us pause calling to mind our sins. And so we pray, I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us all to everlasting life. Kyrie eleison. Christ eleison. Kyrie eleison. <clears throat> Let us pray. God of might, giver of every good gift, put into our hearts the love of your name, so that by deepening our sense of reverence, you may nurture in us what is good, and by your watchful care, keep safe what you have nurtured. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. We do not want you to be unaware, brothers and sisters, about those who have fallen asleep, so that you may not grieve like the rest who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose, so too will God, through Jesus, Bring with him those who have fallen asleep. Indeed, we tell you this on the word of the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will surely not proceed those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself, with a word of command, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God, will come down from heaven and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. Thus, we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore, console one another with these words. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord comes to judge the earth. The, the Lord, Lord comes, comes to, to judge, judge the, the earth. earth. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord, all you lands. Tell his glory among the nations, among all peoples his wondrous deeds. The Lord, Lord comes, comes to, to judge earth. the earth. For great is the Lord and highly to be praised. Awesome is he beyond all gods. For all gods of the nations are things of naught, but the Lord made the heavens. The, the Lord, Lord comes, comes to, to judge the earth. earth. Let the heavens be glad and the earth rejoice. Let the sea and what fills it resound. Let the plains be joyful and all that is in them. Then shall the trees of the forest exult. The Lord, the Lord comes, comes to, to judge, judge the, the earth. earth. Before the Lord, for he comes, for he comes to rule the earth. He shall rule the world with justice and the peoples with his constancy. The Lord, Lord comes, comes to judge the, the earth. earth. <clears throat> Thank you. 
Upon me, he has sent me to bring glad tidings to the poor. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. The Lord be with you. A reading for the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus came to Nazareth where he had grown up and went according to his custom into the synagogue on the Sabbath day. He stood up to read and was handed a scroll of the prophet Isaiah. He unrolled the scroll and found the passage where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to bring glad tidings to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, and to proclaim a year acceptable to the Lord. Rolling up the scroll, he handed it back to the attendant and sat down. The eyes of all the synagogue looked intently at him. He said to them, Today the scripture passage is fulfilled in your hearing. And all spoke highly of him and were amazed at the gracious words which came from his mouth. They also asked, Is this not the son of Joseph? He said to them, Surely, you will quote me this proverb, physician, cure, your, cure yourself, and say, do here in your native place the things that we heard were done in Capernaum. And he said to them, amen, I say to you, no prophet is accepted in his own native place. Indeed, I tell you, there were many widows in Israel in the days of Elijah, when the sky was closed for three and a half years, and a severe famine spread over the entire land. It was to none of these that Elijah was sent, but only to the widow of Zarephath in the land of Sidon. Again, there were many lepers in Israel during the time of Elisha, the prophet. Yet not one of them was cleansed, but only Naaman, the Syrian. When the people in the synagogue heard this, they were filled with fury. They rose up, drove him out of the town, and led him to the brow of the hill, on which the town had been built to hurl him down headlong, but he passed through their midst, through the midst of them and went away. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. This first reading um, it almost sounds like Paul is, is believing that the parousia, the coming of our Lord again in glory, is going to happen in his lifetime. It's going to happen very soon. And, you know, I think if we were in his shoes, we would hope the same thing. And, of course, those... Uh, many people would say, Lord, please come soon, but just not yet. Because, you know, there's people that want to have, have their cake and eat it too. They want to be able to live a life full of fun and frolic and, and, and sin and debauchery as, as long as they can and then have uh, an opportunity to go to confession at the last minute. That doesn't work. You know, in Paul's sight, to await the perusia is not something that you just, that you sit on a sofa and just sit, well, here I am. It's one of those ones, something that we work on for the rest of our lives, for, for whatever time we do have. It is like working on a great thesis. It's a lifelong thesis. We do all of the, all the, the study. We write. We rewrite and so on and so forth. And we continue to do that. It is a lifelong effort. And indeed, we pour ourselves into it. And that is who we are called to be as Catholics and as Christians. We pour ourselves into this lifelong thesis that will soon be presented before our Lord. It is a life that has been given to us that has been greatly blessed, both now by virtue of all the sacraments that we receive, and from those sacraments, we should come forth something, nothing less 
them beautiful and wonderful, sprouting forth from it just the fullness of God's love and God's mercy and compassion. And so indeed, it is a thesis that should not only expound well on what God has taught and what God has given, but how it is lived and what purpose it brings to one's life. It's almost like when a man has a job, when a person has a job, it gives them a sense of value. It's the same way living the life of Christ gives us a sense of value that's already been given to us, but is it expounded upon that much more because we live it and live it to the full. All of a sudden it gives us great purpose to continue wanting to do that which has been given to us and is sown into our very substance, into our very being by virtue of the sacraments of what we hear in sacred scripture. So this is who we are. Why not live that to the full? Why not present to our Lord when he comes again in glory or when, we are, when our time is up here on earth, the thesis that has been written with great love, that has been written with all the things we've done and all those things we've avoided with those people that we've interacted with and invited them to be so much more in that love of God, to correct them gently and invite them beyond their misunderstanding of who Jesus is, that they may too live a full life. That is the kind of thesis I want to turn into our Lord. That is the kind of lifelong thesis each and every one of us should work on and live every single day. With confidence in God's goodness, in God's goodness let us turn to him with our needs. For all who are discerning a call to a religious vocation, may the Holy Spirit give them the courage and grace to respond generously. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer for policymakers. May the Lord of life inspire in them a desire to protect life in all stages from conception to natural death. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who grieve, may the hope of, of life in Christ bring them comfort and consolation. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer for this faith community. May Christ lead each and every one of us here at St. John the Baptist into an ever-deepening love for one another and for the God who gave us all life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray also for our faithful departed, especially for Al Addington, for whom this Mass is offered. May Al and all who have gone before us mark with the sign of faith, soon be in the presence of God with, joyful, with joy and peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all those prayers offered for the Blessed Sacrament and adoration, and for our private petitions we bring at this time. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Eternal Father, look with favor, we pray, on the, on the petitions we bring to your name. In the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for your goodness we have received this gift of bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for your goodness we have received this gift of wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. The good of all His holy church. May this sacred offering, O Lord, confer on us always the blessing of salvation, that what it celebrates in mystery, it may accomplish in power through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, creator of the world and source of all life. For you never sake the works of your wisdom, but by your providence are even now at work in our midst. With mighty hand and outstretched arm, you led your people Israel through the desert. Now as your church makes her pilgrim journey in the world, you always accompany her by the power of the Holy Spirit and lead her along the paths of time to the eternal joy of her kingdom through Christ our Lord. And so with angels and saints, we too sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God who loved the human race and who always walked with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst when we are gathered by his love and when it is once for the disciples, so now for us. He opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask you to send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and he said the blessing. He broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross of so the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again. And we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us. And grant by the power of the spirit of your love, we may be counted now into the day of eternity among the members of your son in whose body and blood we have communion. And so having called us to your table, Lord, confirm us in unity so that together with Francis, our Pope, and Paul, our Bishop, with all bishops, priests, and deacons, and with your entire people, as we walk your ways with faith and hope, we may strive to bring joy and trust into the world. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith 
you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face, and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us, when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her most chaste spouse, with the apostles and martyrs, our beloved patrons, St. John the Baptist, St. Elizabeth Ann Seton, and Blessed Stanley Rother, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and form of divine teaching, we dare to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you always. The Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. How great is the goodness, is it the goodness, Lord, that you keep for those who fear you.
Renewed by this bread from the heavenly table, we beseech you, Lord, that being the food of charity may conform our hearts and stir in us to serve you in our neighbor. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray together our St. Michael the Archangel prayer. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly hosts, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. The Lord be with you. May every blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit come upon you and remain with you forever and ever. Amen. Go forth proclaiming the gospel by our lives. Thanks be to God. Jesus, say...